tomorrow. Laura, what do you got? All right, Sean, thanks so much. Good evening from Washington. Thanks for joining us tonight. News is breaking all over the world. We have you covered from every angle. You just saw President Trump wrapping up that major speech in South Korea. We're going to have analysis soon. He's heading to China. And this could be the most important part of this Asian trip. We're going to have reaction a lot on the line there. And in the Virginia governor's race, we're going to tell you why the Republican Ed Gillespie could not get it done. He was on last night with us. Could not win it there. And the left keeps disparaging people of faith. What is going on? Uh, the power of prayer. That's apparently a threat to people. We're going to have more on all those stories throughout the hour. But first, the latest on Sunday's horrific mass shooting in Sutherland Springs, Texas. The more we learn about Devin Patrick Kelly, the more shocking it is that he was ever able to purchase a gun. Now, not only did this freak assault his wife and fracture the skull of his stepson, but he also escaped from a mental hospital in that same time frame. Now, despite this, the Air Force never entered him into an FBI database, and that cleared the way for him to purchase the weapons he used during the shooting spree. Absolutely incredible. Now, back in Sutherland Springs, we're hearing about the many acts of heroism at the First Baptist Church from those who survived and from those who, of course, succumbed. By now, you've heard about Stephen Williford, the plumber who stopped the shooting by engaging with the uh, killer with a gun of his own. And tonight, we're learning more about another person, Joanne Ward. This mother of four died in a heroic attempt to shield her own children from the killer. Joining us now from Sutherland Springs is a dear friend of this heroic woman, and she's the family spokesperson at a very difficult time, Vonda Smith, and also Texas's Lieutenant Governor, Dan Patrick, who spoke at length with the hero, Mr. Williford, tonight. Both of you, uh, it is good to see you both uh, under such difficult circumstances. Vonda, I want to start with you. I had a chance to talk to you briefly. You just happened to be listening to my radio show this morning, and you called in yeah. because you had just spent time with Joanne Ward's daughter, nine years old, right. who had been in that church. Tell us what she told you. The first thing she told me was that the reason that she didn't get shot like everybody else was because her mama threw her on the ground and told her to hide. And she did. And she said, I didn't get shot because I was hiding. And she, she proceeded. was uh, minor injury, correct? And, and, and yet she two had of none. her siblings, she had none. Two of her siblings none. died, correct? She, the, she wasn't injured. She could have been. Um, she says that a bullet went right by her face and knocked off her glasses. And she was not even scathed. So she, as soon as Joanne threw her on the ground, she stayed hiding. And, and I'm sorry, what was your next question? And two, two of her siblings uh, died in this horrific Two attack. of her siblings died, yeah. Joanne, as soon as she threw her on the ground, she scooped up her other three that were sitting next to her in a pew. Uh, Ryland, who's five, and Brooke, who is five, and Emily, who's seven. And she immediately covered them with her body. And that's, that's exactly how Rihanna, Rihanna, you know, described it. She just said she was on top of them. And it just, I guess it all happened so fast, I assume. But the mother, as we the, know, the, the shooter. This, this is the mother's ultimate sacrifice. Dan, as Lieutenant Governor of Texas, you presided over natural disaster in the last few months. And now spending time tonight with Stephen Williford, the hero in all of this, uh, mother, you know, Joanne Ward, who is deceased, was killed. Stephen survived this, but he engaged the killer. Tell us what he told you tonight. Yes. Uh, I had an extraordinary hour with him and a, and a pastor earlier uh, this evening, and uh, and I asked Stephen permission of what to say on his behalf, and. He said, tell Laura and tell the country, tell the world, I'm not a hero. Uh, I'm a victim. Uh, he said, I lost my friends. 
I lost people in my community. Um, he doesn't want to be treated like a hero, Laura. He just reacted. He said God gave him great presence of mind and, and, and calmness as he, as he walked out that door facing the shooter. Uh, he said he'd like to go to the hospital, as I, as I did later tonight. I went to the hospital uh, to visit some of those who were wounded and have lost others. And he said, I'd like to go to the hospital with you, but I just can't right now. Um, he's, a, he's a Christian, most of all, he said. Dan, tell everyone I'm a Christian, and I'm part of this faith community that is going to stand strong. He's a humble man. Um, He's a hero to all of us, but to himself, um, he's another victim, and that's how he wants to be seen. Dan, is there any doubt in your mind after spending time with him tonight, as distraught as he is, and I want to hear from both of you on this, that were he not the type of man he is, I know he's humble, he doesn't want any credit, but President Trump was right. We would have had a lot more carnage. This man was hell-bent on shooting up whatever he could find it looked like. I, I said to him, Laura, I, uh, I said, Stephen, uh, I know you don't want to be a hero, but understand that um, your reaction uh, probably saved many other lives. There would have been a police shootout, for example, that, that police officers could have been wounded or killed. They drove by another church uh, in the chase. Uh, the gunman could have stopped at that church because obviously this was more than just domestic violence. For me, Laura, this was just another attack on people of faith in this world. Whether you're Jews or Muslims or Christians today, people of faith are under attack. And um, so there's no question in my mind that, that Stephen um, saved the lives of countless uh, others and is, is still wrestling with this. He's not getting a lot of sleep and he's still uh, working through this, but um, there'll, be a, there'll be a time that he'll tell his story in detail but um, now he just wants to be known as a Christian and a victim. Wow. Uh, and to think, Vonda, about how much our society focuses on celebrity and what you have and what you're wearing and, and you know, where you went to school, all of that. And at a time like this, you see a mother's love for her children. I have three children. And I, yeah. I got it on, down on my knees tonight and I prayed with my children for the people of Texas yes. again. Cry, I mean, and yes. my kids don't really understand it, they're little, but I, I was crying myself, thinking of her, ultimate sacrifice. Are you surprised knowing, uh, Joan, as you do, that she did this instinctively for her children? Joanne always had her children at the top of her mind, her ideas, her thoughts, everything. When we would go to lunch, even with Joanne sitting there with her children, we couldn't carry on a, a normal conversation with her because she would be interrupted by her children, not because they were misbehaved, they were perfectly behaved. But if they needed anything, it was the drop of a hat, it was about her children. And that's Joanne's heart. It was always giving her children first place and her family. And for her to do this, she always told me even, and it's, this th it's the thing that you hear sometimes parents say, but you never think they'll have to. She said, I would die for my children. Mm. And she ended up having to do that in the very end. And that does not surprise any of us in this community that knows her because she loved them so. And she, she gave it up for them, ultimately. Laura? Dan, Dan, Laura, we she she was, yeah, yeah, Dan go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. I just she wanted was the to share something with Christ. you. I went to the hospital tonight. This, 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 this faith that we're seeing, this faith-based community is unbelievable. And I went to visit a, a lady. The names have not been released, so I won't release her name. But she had been shot multiple times. Her daughter, her granddaughter was the floor above her in critical condition. Her husband was killed. This is just unimaginable. I went and visited another lady who today was just for the first time, I was maybe the first person she had talked to. And she said, tell me, did they all die? Uh, I wasn't ready for that. And, but the lady I had visited previously had said to me, I lost 80% of my friends. I lost my husband. My granddaughter's in critical condition. But a church family went to heaven. 
An entire church family went to heaven together, and we will be together with them again. And that's what I shared with the other lady when she said, did they all die? And I said, no, but a church family went together to heaven to meet with the Lord. I, Laura, you and I have known each other a long time as fellow Christians. I've never seen a statement of faith like we have seen. A pastor said earlier to me just a few minutes ago, Dan, a lone star welcomed Jesus Christ into this world, and a lone star state is mm -hmm. showing that faith is stronger than evil and hate. And, Joanne, uh, it's an Joanne, I want to—it's happening I, in this little town. Uh, Joanne, uh, I, I want to say you reached out to Joanne Ward a few years ago. She was having a really tough time. You helped bring right. her to Christianity. She, ironically, she goes to and connects with this church and she ends up dying there. Now a lot of the atheists and a lot of the cynics will say, see, it, the, the faith killed her. She, she got close to God and look at what happened to her. There is no God. How would you respond to that? Mm -hmm. uh -oh. I, I don't even know what to say to that. I just know that this woman's faith was so strong. I, I may not have brought her to Christianity. I know that her faith was wavering and her faith strengthened over the three years I've known her. And she did end up in church and that is where she died. And the thing that, that I know that Joanne would want people to know is that live for Christ no matter what. She was dragging people to church. She was begging her best friend Cody to go to Sunday school with her. She, that was her heart. And no, it, it, evil is here and that is not God's plan. God's plan is not for evil, it's for good. And if we would turn to Him, He's got an ultimate good for us in store. And it may not be here on this earth, but it'll end up that way. And that's the end of the story, because we know the end of the book. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Patrick and Vonda, thank you for sharing this incredibly difficult moment with us. But I think we need to confront evil and we need to call it out. We need to stand for what is right. And you helped do, us, do that for us tonight. Thank you both.